I'm Joe James. In this video, I want to cover five essential programming languages to learn for 2016. So this video is mainly directed for new computer science students. They're just starting out and trying to figure out really what, what they really need to learn. And these languages, uh, my recommendations really are based on how widely used languages are, whether they're growing or declining in popularity, how big their uh, range of libraries is, and areas they're growing into. So number five, we're going to count down here, is JavaScript. JavaScript used to be just a widely used client-side web scripting language. A uh, short one or two lines to add an animation to a web page, but actually it's grown way beyond that. So now you, you have JavaScript being used in almost every website on the web. And in terms of trends, where it's trending, server-side scripting now is very popular with JavaScript. And also, it's, uh, you see full 10,000 line applications being developed in JavaScript. So JavaScript actually supports object-oriented programming now, sort of. It's now a very widely used programming language to develop full applications. And I see that continuing to grow as a very strong programming language for the web. Next, and these are roughly in, in reverse order of importance. So SQL, Standard Query Language, or uh, SQL, is the standard database query language. There's really no competitor to SQL. Anything you do with database, you're going to be using SQL. So that means web development. Almost every website uses SQL to access data. And um, data analysis, right? Anything in terms of data analysis or big data analytics or anything like that, you're going to be using SQL. Uh, even the new NoSQL languages no actually means not only SQL. So you'll see uh, NoSQL languages like Mongo or Cassandra. These languages, they use SQL as well, and they continue to build on SQL. So nothing's going to replace SQL in importance in terms of a database language. Uh, next, C++. C++, or some version of C, is probably the most widely used language right now, and has been for quite a long time. So C Sharp, C++, and just plain old C are the three leading variants of C programming language. And uh, where C is going, well, it's, it's still vitally important for applications where performance is really critical, because C++ is a very high speed language at a low level. And it's very useful in embedded and low power applications. It's widely used. Some variant of C, C Sharp actually is used in Windows application development, which is still pretty important. And it's also influenced more other programming languages probably than any other language. So learning C++ actually is going to make it easier for you to learn and understand other programming languages that are based off of C. Next, Python. And actually, Python is my favorite programming language mainly because it's a really easy starter language with English-like syntax. So you look at a line of Python code, and even a non-programmer can pretty much tell what it does. It's pretty easy to write. You're not going to pull your hair out with uh, you know, crazy curly braces and brackets and all this kind of stuff with Python. It's pretty simple syntax. It's pretty easy to follow, easy to understand, easy to learn. And, and that's the great thing about Python. But beyond that, Python has a very wide range of libraries. It's uh, an excellent general purpose scripting language. You can do a lot of different stuff with it. It's versatile. And it's heavily used in both web and scientific computing. So Python is, is a great language for that. And uh, on the web side, Django is now becoming a very popular uh, web framework, which is uh, Python-based. And number one, Java is hands down the best object-oriented programming language. So Java is a compiled language. Java is used in over 3 billion Android devices. So that makes Java right up there with C as one of the top two most widely used programming languages, and that's not going to change. Java is a great programming language. You learn a lot of uh, fundamentals of programming by learning Java. Uh, so it's really an essential language for any programmer to know. Actually, all five of these are. And Java is also growing as a server language. So why am I stopping at five? Well, I think those are really five essential programming languages for any programmer to learn. They really are. They're essential tools to have as a computer scientist for, for anybody, no matter what field you decide to specialize in.
But there are other languages depending on where your focus is, right? So if you're focused on data and database management, then then you may want to learn some of the um, NoSQL languages like Mongo, Cassandra, or some of the other ones that are out, as well as some big data analysis tools uh, like Hive or Pig. If you're focused on web development, PHP is an essential language. It's used on tens, millions, maybe hundreds of millions of websites worldwide. Uh, Ruby on Rails is very, very popular for web development. HTML5 and CSS are not actual programming languages, but they're pretty vital to learn for any web development. Scientific computing, MATLAB is probably the most widely used numeric or scientific computing language. R and Julia are also both great scientific programming languages. R is actually kind of a statistics language, but you can do a lot of different stuff with a numerical analysis with R, and it's pretty easy to learn. MATLAB has a really wide range of scientific libraries that are pretty cool. So in terms of scientific computing, those are, those are great things to focus on. And mobile apps, uh, I already mentioned Java as being really the leading mobile app programming language, but Apple now uses a Swift programming language. So it used to use uh, C, now it uses Swift. So if you're going to do a mobile app development, learning Java and Swift are probably the two most essential languages for that. And there are other areas of specialty. So depending on what area of uh, computer science you decide to focus on, there may be other languages or frameworks or tools that you need to learn, but this is just kind of a really rough overview to help you get started. So I hope this gives you a good introduction to programming languages, what, what to learn, what's important, what to focus on going into 2016. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.